I was having a discussion with someone and the subject had to do with the issue of salvation and the return of Jesus Christ. Since I was about to publish a book on my expected timeline for the crash of the U.S. and world economies, the timing for the inevitable reappearance of Jesus on earth was topical in my mind. It was in the spring of 2011 that I received what was to become one of the few communications from God that he conveyed to me in a clear, unequivocal manner. That was the fifth such communique over my lifetime. And although it's an extremely rare occurrence, when the revelations come, they signal something very special will happen, and it always does. I recall mentioning to the other person that Jesus cannot return until Bible prophecies regarding his reappearance have been fulfilled. Such events as detailed in the books of Revelation, Matthew, and Daniel, for example. I told him there could not be a secret pre-tribulation rapture for this very reason, and also because nowhere in scriptures does it teach that Jesus will return prior to the great tribulation of a devastating New World Order Antichrist government beast system. That's in Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31, and also in Mark chapter 13 and Luke chapter 21. There is reserved a special place in hell for those who profess Christianity and parrot the pre-tribulation dispensational cliché as a means to invalidate this verse. That is, believing that this verse of scripture was written only to the Jews and applies only to them and not to any other humans. This is just one example of how weak their argument is. They will bear the consequences found in Revelation 22:18-19 where they are cursed with all the plagues found in that last book of the Bible. Their name is removed from the book of those saved. It's unfortunate that many who profess Christianity do not love the truth enough to believe and defend it. And that too is a curse sent from God, which can be found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9-12. through 12. Paraphrased, because they have no love of the truth, God sends them strong delusion, so that they may believe a lie and be damned to hell can't say that I'll miss them. Liars shall have no place in heaven. And that's Revelation 21.8. So I was in a discussion with someone who claimed to be a Christian, and we talked about the big when question, referencing another verse in Matthew 24.36, which states that no one can know the day or hour of Jesus' return. Yet the corollary verses 32.34 do allow for knowing the time span of the generation that experiences the end time events. Hence, it is possible to have understanding of the general time frame in which the Lord will fulfill his promise to return for his saints. Incidentally, that's the one and only time anyone will get supernaturally airlifted out of here. Not any time sooner, unless they're a pre-trib or after cultist. Then any time's as good as any other because, well, such a person doesn't care what the truth is. All they know is what some lying preacher told them. They have no love of the truth, and therefore they have no love for Jesus, who is the truth. John 14, 6. It's very easy to prove that those who profess to be Christian are frauds. We were driving down the road on our way to a destination where, upon arrival, I received a clear and concise message, and that was unmistakably related to what my acquaintance and I were talking about. The message was this, in the year 2051, there will be few saved. What's crucial about this message is that God tangibly revealed it to me in no uncertain terms. In the past, his message was delivered by sub-auditory communication of a verbal message. At other times, it was variously a message written in the clouds. But in this instance, it was substantive and concrete. I could literally touch it. There's no mistaking the meaning. The probability of a coincidence is extremely remote, and there are many reasons for this, which I won't divulge at this time. But suffice to say that I'm a probabilities guy, and calculating the likelihood of an event is something I do all the time as a market analyst. For example, I'm the only person in the world who figured out the likelihood of a stock market crash in 2008 and published documentation prior to that event having occurred. Six months later, it happened, and I was absolutely correct. So, I'm well qualified to make predictions about the significance of meaningful events. Here's what all this means. By the year 2051, Revelation prophecies will have been fulfilled. The Jerusalem Temple will have been rebuilt. 
the Antichrist will have made his appearance known and will enter the newly reconstructed temple where he will declare himself to be God. I can save you a little suspense during the interim regarding his identity. The probabilities favor Barack Obama, who will soon be selected by the Rothschilds as the UN Secretary General. From there, it's just a matter of time before he's fully indwelled by Lucifer and announces that, surprise, I'm God. You can read about my account of what that could entail in my book, The Coming of Wisdom, where I dated that event in the year 2027. What is the significance of the year 2051? Will Jesus return in that year? That is a question that only time will reveal. I don't know the exact day and hour, but from what I can discern, just by observing current events taking place all over the world, the evil of mankind is increasing at an exponential rate. Computer technology is doubling every 18 months. Government is becoming increasingly tyrannical with each passing year. More and more acts of terrorism are being staged. The worldwide oppression of the people and the need to microchip everyone is exploding on all the controlled media networks. Cyborg technology fusing man and machine is proceeding at a staggering rate. They're spraying us with chemtrail gene splicing DNA to alter the, gene, uh, the human genome. They poisoned our food to dumb us down or outright kill us. They're telling our little children it's okay to be a fag. They're injecting them with neurotoxic vaccines to give them autoimmune diseases, autism, and lower their IQ. All the while, their truth adverse, ignorant parents stand by and smile approvingly. It's a sad statement about the ignorance of Americans on a grand scale. Politicians make a mockery of Bible truth, and Hollywood laughs at God. How much longer will he tolerate it? I expect that in 33 more years than the date this video is recorded, the Great Earth Experiment will have completed its first phase. The selection process will have ended. Jesus will return to set the record straight on who's saved and who isn't. Then, on to when the 1,000 year millennial reign of Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, upon this dark planet. In the meantime, those of us who know the truth will be watching and waiting until humankind reaches its bleakest moment. Then, the few, the saved, are going to translate into the invisible kingdom and watch the unfolding drama proceed from there.